Well, this is how you solve a Rubik's Cube manually. As per a survey, only one out of 20 people are able to solve a Rubik's Cube, which is almost 5% of the total population. In today's video, we shall be creating an application out of OpenCV to solve a Rubik's Cube. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome to my channel. This video concentrates on solving an unsolved Rubik's Cube using OpenCV libraries. Recently, I came across a GitHub repository and upon my search, I got hold of Viknesh, who had created something amazing to solve a Rubik's Cube using OpenCV. Now, today we, ha we have with us Viknesh. He's a master's graduate from Colorado School of Mines with an interest in computer vision and he's also a part of our data science community where he helps other uh, fellow members and data science enthusiasts and he has also built a couple of computer vision projects as well. Now in case you're new to this channel, please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified on my future videos and sessions. Let's get started. I'll just hand over the mic to Viknesh. Viknesh, probably you can introduce yourself and then get started. Hi, guys. This is Viknesh. So I'm a recent graduate, as uh, Satyajit told, told you guys. So uh, my interest is in computer vision. I love doing computer vision projects. And one of the favorite projects is the Rubik's Cube one. So my interest towards this project is like I lo love to solve Rubik's Cube. So I wanted to make a program out of it. And uh, to do so, I used computer vision tools like OpenCV tools. Uh, this was done during my master's program where uh, in one of the courses where I was allowed to do this as a project. And everyone loved it, even my professor. So let's start with it. So I'm importing. Uh, few libraries where OpenCV sys is like just to exit the program or something. I'm using Python here. So uh, I'm using OpenCV and Python. And then I'm using time, math, and stuff like that. The main library which I'm using here is Cosimba, which is available only for Python. But the Cosimba is, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a deep learning model made by Herbert Cosimba. So he named it in this name itself. So the Cosimba model will actually take the colors in each face in terms of labels, like uh, say one for white, two for yellow, three for blue or something like that. That is how I named it. And then uh, it will take those things in order. And then finally, it will give us, okay, it will solve this uh, cube and it will give us what moves should be made, keeping the friend face facing us. So it, it will give us in in a string saying that R, R2, L, L2, R prime. So R means R right, uh, right, uh, right face clockwise. R prime means right, right face counterclockwise. Uh, L, F, B for back, D for down, U for up. So that is how this model goes on. Uh, the next thing which I, I mean, I, I, let me start from the beginning. So I directly go to the main function where I have multiple, I mean, I'm just trying to track each face and then I'm ca capturing the video. So I'm using the default camera, which would be our web camera. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm reading the videos image each frame and then uh, I'm actually saving it just for my purpose so that I can post it somewhere or something. And then, okay, so for each line, I'm just finding the face, what face it is. So what colors are there in the face? So it should have nine colors, right? So let's let's jump to find face. So this is our find face. So it is taking all the, all the data from whatever data which we already have from uh, main file, it is taking that. And then it's taking the image or, or the video and then finding the image out of it. And then uh, it's finding, it's actually finding the blobs. So what it is doing is it's another function called detect faces. So let's go to the detect face. So for detect face, it is actually converting the image to a gray image because it's easily, it's easy to find contours in a gray image, which would you, which you would know when you study computer vision. 
So that is a detailed explanation. So we convert the gray, gray image and then we have a kernel where it will say, okay, this is one of the edge or this is one of the, this thing. Uh, so we find the gray image, we find the, I mean, we open and close it so that uh, it's get it gets sharpened. Actually, the image gets in a better quality and then we uh, get a threshold out of it. This threshold, we use it to find the contours actually. That that is the threshold. This is actually uh, changeable. Like it depends on where you are and how you are, or whatever your lighting is. You can change this threshold. This is the first thing which you would be changing if your code doesn't work. So next thing we find the contours. Contours are something like uh, when you see the video, uh, you'll have some blue color lines. So, so that is a contour. Something which is a closed substance where the inner thing does not have any disturbance. Like it is like mostly like a contour, like a square or circle or something. So anything can be a contour. Even an irregular amoeba shaped things can also be a contour. So what we do is for each contour, we find the area. And I'm, I'm just specifying the area should be just between this range because I want to eliminate most of the bigger contours like a door or some other background, which we not, we need not have. Then for this contour, that particular contour, I'm finding the perimeter of, I mean, or the arc length of the contour so that we can find whether our, our, our whatever contour we found is of the shaped square because we, we know that squares are like A squared is the area and 4A is the perimeter out of which we can find, okay, from four perimeter, I divide by four, I find A and then square it to find area. So I'll, I'll find those. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to divide it by four and then squaring it and then finding the difference between the original area. So I find an area with the perimeter and then find the difference between the original area. And then I have a threshold for it. So I'm saying, okay, the difference should be less than 150. Then it is a square. I'm just make, making sure like, because your cube can be in any angle, right? So I'm finding that and then I'm deciding, okay, this is square. And then I'm doing, and then I'm doing uh, contours. I, I just append them. I, I just store them. And then if I have nine of them, because our cube just have nine colors in each face. So only if I have nine, otherwise it is going to not consider them. So only if I have nine, I'm just going to find the colors of it. So uh, it might be like uh, there are six colors, right? So I'm just finding the colors in terms of RGB values. So blobs I zeros are blobs I one is G uh, blobs I two is uh, are B. So red, green and blue. I'm just having a range so that I'm saying if it is more than 120, all the three are more than 120 or 100. I'm saying, okay, it is too high to be a white. So it should be a white. That is what I'm trying to say. And then these values I decided on my own trial and error method. You can actually change these values to adapt it to your environment. So that is what I would say. Uh, and then I would say like, okay, and then I'm returning it, which will come here. So I'm returning the blobs and the face. So I have the colors of the face and then the blob colors. Like, yeah, I have the face and blob colors and the face I'm storing it as, okay, there are say nine elements, say all of them are white. I'm just store. I mean, I'm just returning this value will have, if it is all white elements, this value will have nine ones, one for white. So say three white, three blue, three green, then it will have one, 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 three, 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 four, 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 like that. Okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm, I mean, I'm actually writing a text saying that, okay, uh, the text would be whatever text I'm giving in this function. In this case, I'm saying show friend face because I, I want the friend face first. And then I'm saying, okay, uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm again checking whether the face is of size nine, which should be. Otherwise, or uh, I'm returning if it is not, if it is not uh, properly found or my my uh, if statement here fails, it is going to say that, okay, return just three values. I'm just giving it as a sample thing so that uh, it does not consider that phase to be whatever we need. Okay. 
and then now uh, we find the phase and then we store it i do the same thing for all the six phases that is what i've been doing here so first thing i find the phase for friend phase and then up phase and i, I mean i have an order and i do that after doing for all the six phases now i i mean this is where it is ending back phase so i do it for all the six phases now i'm concatenating so this this is the order in which the cosimba model needs it so it starts with up right front down left and back so this is the order which it needs it and then i'll i'm storing it and uh, i'm just giving it to cosimba i'm i'm giving it to cosimba i'm just trying to search where it is yeah i'm giving it to cosimba i'm getting the solved string so with the solved string i'm just going to show so okay for every solved string i'm just splitting it because it's going to be like r l something r space l space something so i'm just going to get it into an array of r l and something like that so i'm saying whether okay it's r r i'm going to do right, right clockwise the these functions right clockwise right counterclockwise friend clockwise friend counterclockwise left yeah, all these six motions into two like six clockwise and counterclockwise so 12 motions we do i have it in rotate py function where i'm just i'm just tracking the cube i'm just trying to track the cube okay how will the actual cube look after the move has been made and also uh like showing the arrows and something like that until see i'm using arrow line so showing the arrows whenever i see the correct cube i'm showing the arrows okay this is the move which you should be making and then after the move is made it will recognize that the move has been made and then it will continue 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 and within 30 moves like it is actually 20 moves 30 moves i say because in case of r2 it is actually two arcs that is what i'm doing you can see that two arcs i'm doing so two right clockwise i'm doing that is why i say 30 moves otherwise it's just 20 moves but uh to be frank it's it's just like i'm just not giving enough uh, space on that so after everything is done i'm checking again checking that whether the sol- cube is solved if it is solved i'm saying that it's solved and then i'm ending the video in like few seconds and that is how i have done this project thank you